gate. You probably won't hear me very clearly, but as you can see, that's a, an overhead view of the village from the top of the church steps. Now we're going down into Churchill. Hopefully, the audio should be good again. The Kersey Village sign. The house is to the right of the camera, date from the 19th century. And again, on the left hand side, we have some 15th century properties. In fact, very early indeed. You can tell with many properties by the amount of timber that goes into the construction and how compacted they are with wooden staves and as you can see there there is a lot of wood within the framework as buildings tended to move forward through the periods of history the gaps between wood and plaster tended to get wider and wider so that and that would have had a door so this is quite an early property and one thing I particularly love here I'll show you now. Is this old fashioned children's sign? Just that dates from the days before uh, modern reflective signs were in use. So, yeah, as you can see, I'm swinging the camera around. It's a very attractive village. This house here is a uh, thatched roof. And there are a few like that in the village. In fact, we're going to look at one or two. But before we actually continue down to the fold that you can see ahead of you, there's a few cars here, it's very quiet. Um, we're going to turn left and go towards the village hall and a particular, if you like, there's a, a small close of other timber frame houses. And this way is off to the village hall. This is the old drift house. It's a beautiful thatched cottage. Sadly, the sun's gone in for the moment. Another little cottage there. A sad fact, is the village is virtually deserted and that's because many of the properties are either second homes to wealthy people or they're owned by companies who rent them out for holiday rentals very much in the shape of the property that we're staying at sorry about the wind here is the, the village hall and i love the way it emulates the medieval nest of the village as it were I mean, the entrance looks almost positively medieval, doesn't it? But it's obviously a fake, it's a facsimile of the rest of the village, but it has a kind of character, doesn't it? And if we go towards the back, we have more modern properties built here, only one or two. It is very, very quiet, isn't it? Let's go back and look at some of the older properties. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying this so far. We, we found it an absolute delight walking around the village, admiring all of these buildings, and um, if you like soaking up the atmosphere of the history of this place. Here we have uh, thatching in progress. This beautiful old timber framed house, as you can see on the camera, is in the process of being thatched. It dates from 1334. And looking at this, you can actually appreciate the work of the thatcher, how much work goes into making those really, really attractive roofs. And you can see how rough this is at the moment. And if we go next door, you can see the finished roof, the finished product and how neat and how tidy they really are. It is a form of art. 
Oh, it's total skill, isn't it? I admire patches. Um, and where do they get the thatch from? Romania. Romania. Yeah. <laughs> Romania has great marshes. We're just going to wander up here and come back. Oh, there's a pussycat there. Be careful. We're just going to wander up and show you this properties as we go along, and then we're going to come back again. Someone cutting the grass. Yep. This property here obviously originally was consisted of a numerous houses that have all been joined together to form one continuous link. Rather strangely, the letterbox is here. There. <laughs> That is rather odd. I've never seen a letterbox in the wall. And this is, the property just extends all the way down here. And as you get towards the end, it has a distinct kink in it. And you can see the bend in the plasterwork. And the unusual window, it has what looks to be leaded glass from the church. It's very interesting. And there's a garden. And we're wondering, just down here to the field, they have um, a small animal farm here. There's little horses. I think that they date, I think they originate rather from Argentina by origin. And one chicken. <laughs> Let's take a view from here. In Kersey, there, there are a number of footpaths, but you don't really have access to anything that you're more or less penned in by wire fencing. So you have a footpath here, but you're really, you really are contained within the field. And over here, you probably can't see them, are the little fellas, and there's four of them, and a larger horse. And I think a couple of ducks and a chicken. But uh, rather than go for the pain of actually walking all the way through and showing you the way back, I'm going to go a little way down here just to show you a feature and then I'm going to deactivate the camera and bring it back online once we get back to our point of origin. There's one thing I forgot to mention when we were wandering up here was where the local people actually wash their clothes, so it would seem. And I'll try and show you this feature as we walk through here. Here we are. There's a stream that flows through here, obviously on days when the water is heavy. But I think this unusual brick box was actually used, and it's got a, a water overflow pipe, was actually used for washing clothing. And it still is here to this day. Anyway, I'm just going to disconnect and rejoin you again very shortly. Hi again folks and we're back at the end of the street again, reconnected. Just to show you one thing, this is the back of our house where we're staying. You can see there. And we'll walk around the front and we'll show you the front of the property. Poppy's in the dog house at the moment, she attempted to charge after a cat. What a beautiful garden this house has got, I'll show you very briefly. This is the house, that very long, thin house, and, and this is their back garden. And this is, the, this is also the house with the iron gates that you still have the door. Oh, yeah. Beautiful, isn't it? I think people come here t to live in these little plastic bubbles, this me medieval bubble to escape from the modern world. And quite frankly, who can blame them? I would do the same.
Anyway, just going back around the corner. This is what we passed when we came down the hill. And this is the property we're staying at at the moment. I'll show you this. And this is our rental property. We're here till, uh, I believe, uh, early part of next week, Tuesday, and we'll have to be on our way again. So today really is an opportune moment to show you the rest of the village. And as you can see, just at the top is the, the church on the hill. Let's head for the Ford. Let's head for where Lady Jane was splashed. <laughs> There's a car going through the splash, slowly. I'm just showing you this now. This house has recently been purchased. It had been left in a very poor state for many, many years. And it's actually one of the, the most important properties here. It's River House. Part of it has already been restored to the right. Work is taking place on the inside of the property. But what is unique is this entrance gate in red brick. Originally it would have been plastered over and it would have looked from the outside at least as though it was made of stone. It's called Ye Old River House, dates to 1490. And uh, of course many vehicles come down here specifically to use the splash I've noticed. But this is a lovely property. I mean look at the doorway on this medieval house. And the old lantern. It's funny, whenever people see you filming, they always slow down when they hit the splash. Have you noticed that? Yeah. So this house is currently in the process of being renovated and it's brick fronted, but it's actually a timber frame property and it is of great antiquity. There's a large parcel of land over the back and I'll show you this aerial video that I shot that you can actually appreciate the size of this estate. And of, of course, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. We're crossing over the bridge the walk bridge probably won't actually go through the splash and there it is yeah as you can see the stream goes on and if you look down the side here you're probably not going to see it with this camera but it goes way back doesn't it the property it's huge absolutely huge bridge house used to be at one of the local shops i think it was last used as a sweet shop in the 60s it's now been sold to a private company and converted into holiday rental. The actual shop doorway was here in front of me. You can see that little that low window, but originally all that was a doorway. And we're heading up the high street just scan around the camera so you can see and appreciate the buildings. This building here would have been jetted originally, but it's part jetted now, so part of it is sticking out, but much of it has been filled in. We go across here. You can see there's lots of little side trackways that just literally lead into fields. This is quite an interesting property here. As you can see, the building has moved slightly over to the right, as you can see with the top gable. But uh, this is obviously typical of timber frame buildings because they're built on wooden sole plates. And over the centuries, the earth and the building frame twist and move, and you end up with these unusual shapes. But they, of course, had character, don't they? Definitely had a character. Anyway, with the Bell Public House, and here we can have a short break. We'll wander around the back. I'll show you the front of the bell. There used to be two pubs in Kersey. I'll show you the second one when we, when we leave a bit later. This sign, the bell, is quite an ancient one. It's been here many, many years. As you can see, there's if you can see this properly, there's brackets at the bottom where it sort of st where the frame goes onwards, but there's nothing attached to it. That used to have the name of the brewery, which owned the pub, but sadly the brewery is long gone. And the only shop in town is here. 
a village have set up a small shop for people to come and buy bits and pieces. Yeah. So what have you got in here? We got. No, well, I'm looking at the bottom first. We've got lollies, we've got potatoes, onions, um, garlic, eggs, and even milk. And above we have. Go for it. We've got beetroot, that looks delicious. Uh, green gauge. Green gauge, uh, plums, tomatoes. And yeah, Victorian plums, Victoria plums, and uh, locally grown tomatoes. Oh, well. We've been buying at a farm shop, haven't we? Yeah. Out of the village. Anyway, let's go into the pub. I'll have a... I think I'll have a nice orange and lemonade. You can see it's a good age. And then we go through to the back. Poppy, are you taking with him? You can see they have a little fish pond here. Anyway, I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to find myself somewhere to sit and I will join you later. But before I do, I'll just give you a view of the rear of the building. All this history and there's lots of it to see here. See you shortly. And here we are, we're outside the Bell we Bell Inn in uh, Kersey. And as it says on the board, the pub actually dates from 1379. I mean, that is an incredible age. Above us is a helicopter, which I think Poppy would be jumping at if she's given the opportunity. But we're going to continue onwards, walking up the high street, looking at some of the properties as we go past. It's a military helicopter that's flying over at the moment. I think an American one. In Suffolk, there are quite a few American air bases. There's only a lot of history here, isn't there? And as you can see, it's very, very quiet. What you see is the odd car, which they all seem more like being abandoned cars, don't they? Because you never see any, any owners, any people driving them. <coughs> Here on the right, I believe, was the second pub in the village. And I think this went out of business in the 1950s. I think it was called the, the Sun. He was a coaching inn, um, at which obviously offered hotel facilities. In here is uh, a man called Mark carrying out renovation work. Hello. <laughs> We're recording actually, so just to oh, warn you, no. yeah. Mark showed us the Hi. renovation work he was doing in there last night. Hey. Hello there. Hi. Are you the assistant? I am. Yeah. Evil assistant. Evil assistant. You're doing a great job here. And what, what year does this date back to, Mark? 1525. So this building dates to 1525. That's a good age, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Nine years. It's a lovely building. It's very small because it was, you said it was once part of a merchant's house. So it's just one small section of a big house, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I appreciate you letting us look around last very night. Good. That was very good. And nice to meet you too. So what are you doing? Wiping off all the... Old plastic and things. Now it's just got to be painted really, isn't it? It's the rottenest job she's got. It is actually. Yeah, it's messy. We're doing a good job though. I can see, I can see the colours coming back. <laughs> Anyway, I'll let you guys crack on. We're just like doing a very quick in and out visit. But uh, it's a lovely old building, as you can see, and a very small garden. Whoops, mind the hole. <laughs> mind the hole. <laughs> 
Thanks, mate. Take it easy. I'll leave you too. See you later. Cheers, mate. And of course, the rest of the house you can see here. So we take it in in uh, in one sweep. You can see that it was a very very big house. I believe at some point in its history it was used for weavers. They had a small weaving industry here, like most places, particularly Lavenham, as one example that we've spoken of previously. There's carpeting around the bend. And now we've reached the very top end of the village. And if you like, at one end the village is crowned by the church and at this end the village is crowned by this beautiful thatched cottage. And there you go. And so this is Kersey. This is the actual village of Kersey. This is the history that we've uh, shared with you today and it's been an enjoyable stay here so far isn't it? I'll just turn the camera around one more time you get a different sweet view of the village. And what do you think Juan? It does, doesn't it? And you love the gardens as well, don't you? Yes. Uh, as we can see here, it looks like a hollyhock growing wild. Mm. This is not really and this is the village pump. This is not a village for the kids, for people that live on social media or constantly need to be on the phone for a business or something because you just. And it's not for people that don't have a car either because you have no supermarkets and ATMs or things like that. So yeah, the nearest town is Hadley, which is uh, two miles from here, I believe. Two and a half miles. So, so and you come here to pretty much forget about the modern world. Yeah. yeah, and to a lot of people that come here, it's a place to escape the modern world, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And over here you have the village standpipe. Of course, it's all sealed over now. But this used to be the pump handle and it's been covered over to a degree yeah so that would have been the, the source of water which is kind of strange really being up here you would think it'd be more closer to where the splash is but uh, evidently it did work and this property we're looking at here has just been sold isn't it the one thing that sticks in your mind always is that you can look at any old photographs and it hasn't changed. Not much, no. no. I mean, essentially the only thing that the major change here was obviously the introduction of electricity and the road surface. I'm waiting for this truck to go by. Up until the 1950s, the road surface here would have been made of uh, compressed rock, broken rock and dust and dirt, which would have provided a hard road surface for people to go down onto. I don't think you had a footpath at that point of history. It was all one surface. But uh, it's certainly a very interesting place to visit, albeit perhaps only for a few days. And I'll just walk the return journey down the high street for you to really appreciate the views here. Yet yeah, strangely, it was a few months ago we were here, in fact, when we were filming the Kersey, the, the Kersey Time Warp. Um, we did on the, the alleged Kersey time walk where somebody felt that they had, or some students had been sent back into the past so they felt and they arrived in Kersey uh, an indeterminate point in the past and experienced a, a desolate empty village which essentially is what you're going to experience today but um, Wanya commented about wouldn't it be nice if we could stay here for a few days and lo and behold, we are here, aren't we? Yeah. 
so I'm really, I feel quite privileged really. Yeah, it was wishful thinking that came true, yeah. Anyway, we're just coming down to the splash. It's not a big village, not by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, it certainly doesn't have many uh, extended roads from it. But it's very compact and very historic. Or did you want to get a marrow? One is going to buy a big marrow very quickly. Oh, there we go. And what are you going to make? Um, stuffed with mincemeat. And onion. And yeah, well, excellent. Yeah. In the oven, that would be great. <laughs> it was my suggestion, actually. <laughs> anyway, we're coming back down to the the, the uh, Ford or Splash. And I think it was about here, wasn't it, when they were soaked and the Love Joy episode? You can see, from, anyway, you'll see from the photograph I'm sharing with you now. But I think it was roughly about here. They were doing some kind of opening of something and they came racing through and they got splashed. And of course, uh, a, a 1950s detective drama was filmed recently here, but um, I've seen nothing of that so far. But uh, anyway, we're now going to call it a day and return back to our holiday cottage. I hope you've enjoyed this wander around Kersey. I've certainly found it a very fascinating place to be, very historic, and it's somewhere that I will never forget, mostly for its antiquity, but also for its peacefulness which is something you don't experience much in the modern world today. Anyway, thank you ladies and gentlemen, and we'll speak to you again soon. Until the next time.